Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well we're out in the shop today and we are going to be working on this uh, 9N Ford tractor. This is a mostly a 9N but it's kind of a conglomeration of several different uh, pieces and parts of 9N, 2N, and 8N but it's mostly a 9N. And so uh, what we're going to be doing today we're having some issues with the hydraulics of the tractor particularly when you put something very heavy on the three-point lift on the back here um, like the disc or mower or things like that. It'll work, but it makes a lot of noise. It's very slow to lift, sometimes won't lift, um, but it makes a lot of chattering noise and uh, doesn't do a very good job lifting. So what I suspect we're gonna be finding is that the pump is worn out. So we're gonna be doing uh, the pump rebuild today, but to start with, we're gonna take off the top cover and that's not necessary for the pump rebuild, but I wanna really look in there and see what's going on and make sure it's clean. And I also wanna look over that top cover and make sure it looks okay and just do some general checking while I'm in there. So first thing we're gonna do, I've already taken the implement off the back, laid it down, which happened to be this trailer mover. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take out the pins here, same place on the other side over there and lay the arms down. We're also gonna take out the bolt here and then we're gonna go around the top. I've also taken the seat off. We're gonna go around and take all these bolts out all the way around. We're not gonna touch this bolt here or here, or this bolt here or here. Those bolts are what's holding the cylinder inside. We don't wanna mess with those. We also don't wanna mess with these four bolts on the side over here. Once we get those loosened, we're gonna go ahead and take off the side cover over here, which is that cover right there on the right side of the tractor. And then we're gonna reach inside and release the forks that touch the control valve. So we'll go ahead and take all those bolts loose and then we'll come back when we're at that cover. Okay, so we got the side cover off. I also went ahead yesterday and got the oil draining out of the transmission and rear end. Uh, so it takes quite a while for that thick oil to drain out. So I went ahead and started that beforehand. So now that we've got the door off and I've already released it, but you can see right here is an arm that comes down. And then right there where my fingertip is, is a little ball and that ball sits inside of that arm and there's another one on the other side of the tractor. So you've got to reach in there with your arm, spread this arm and its matching pair on the other side apart just slightly and pull out that little T-shaped shaft and get it out from between those two arms. Then you're going to be able to take the top cover off. So we'll go ahead and try to do that. You can see here all the bolts are out. So we'll go ahead and lift up on it and it may be fairly stuck or it may not be. Looks like it's fairly stuck. So we're gonna go ahead and pry on it a little bit and see if we can get it up. Okay, so here we are, the cover is off. You can see right here is the port that the oil comes up to the top cover. You can see down inside all the oil's been drained out and there's the top of the pump down there. There's a lot of debris in here, a lot of just grime and dirt on all the walls and everything. So I think once I get this pump out of here, I'm gonna try to at least rinse this down with something. Um, I don't know, kerosene maybe, or diesel, or something like that, just to get the big pieces out. Um, none of it's ideal without taking the whole thing apart and really cleaning it, but we're gonna try to go ahead and do something with it. Worst of all, you can see down in the bottom, down there, and over here, there's just a lot of grime. And I'm not exactly sure how the oil gets from the front area in the transmission back to here, but wherever that port is, if it's in the bottom or something, seems like it's almost kind of clogged up because it hasn't been transferring the fluid from the transmission back here very well. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get the pump out next. And to do that, we're gonna come back to the back and take these four bolts around the PTO shaft off and pull the PTO shaft straight back. So here's the cover taken off. You can see the cylinder right there and the piston goes in that way. Everything looks like it's in good shape on that. I rebuilt most of that a few years ago. It has the new uh, piston and rubber o-ring in it. So everything's really in good shape on this top cover. I'm not going to mess with it other than just uh, the cleanup um, and then we'll get it put back on. So we'll go ahead and pull that shaft, the PTO shaft, and then start looking at the pump. Okay, so we're down underneath the tractor now and we're gonna go ahead and take the eight bolts off around this cover, which is attached to the pump. 
and then we're gonna set that pump down. I'd imagine it's gonna be fairly heavy, but I know a lot of it's made of aluminum. So we're gonna take it loose and try to set it down here on the cardboard. Okay, so here is the pump taken out. You can see this is the front of the pump here. And we'll spin it around. You can see there's the test port on the side. This one happens to have a uh, auxiliary attachment hooked on there, but I have the original just plug that's gonna go back on when we put this back together. Then here's the front, excuse me, the back. Here's the back of the pump. The only thing I've done to this pump itself since I've owned it is replace this uh, pressure relief valve. Um, it was having a problem when I got it and I actually replaced it with it in the tractor reaching in through the hole and getting it done. So that's brand new. Probably end up reusing that. Here's the valve that opens and closes and actuates the pump. You can see all this goo that's down here on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and try to clean that out. So what we're going to do is start with taking this apart. We're going to take off the two uh, valve bodies on each side. See if we can open up the uh, valves in here and see if anything's broken. We'll do that on both sides and then see how much wear we have on the pistons and things like that. So we'll go ahead and start with uh, taking the bolts off here on the side, the four on each side and taking those off. Okay, so we finally got the pump all apart, which took quite a bit longer than expected. Uh, we found that on the bottom of these pins right here, which go down inside the valve body, uh, these bottom little discs were seized down inside of that hole and they were seized with a bunch of debris and kind of a gritty material. Uh, so we ended up, what I did was I took the old one here and the shaft here pulled out of this bottom part. I was able, you can see where that little shaft has been flattened out, I was able to lay that shaft on an anvil and oval it out a little bit and then put it back in the hole and beat it back in with a hammer and a punch until it really hard, uh, tightly cinched into this disc and then I was able to grab it with some needle nose and pull it out since it was garbage anyway and uh, underneath and around we found all that kind of sandy material so the combination of washing it and playing with a little bit and then washing it and so on and so forth I was able to get all four of those out which took quite a bit of time so these are all the garbage pieces from inside the valve body and then over here we have all the new pieces so the way this goes back together both of them are the same going back together the parts are all stacked up like this. You have the disc at the bottom, the lower valve, a spring, the upper valve, another spring, and then this cap. So that's how it's all gonna go back down inside of here. So right here is kind of the order that that's gonna go in, back in the valve body. So it'll drop down this hole at the top, just in that order. So go ahead and put all four of those in. Once those are together, there should be just enough spring pressure that pushes these caps out the top, but with pressure, you can push them back down and seat both of them. So then we'll wipe down this piece here, and it's gonna screw in on top and hold both those caps down. So that's what they should both look like all put together. Then we're gonna go ahead and put these plugs back in the sides, and there's two that go in each. You can see right here and here on both. It was really handy to take these plugs out to get the debris out and then also this bottom plug. Once I finally released these pins at the bottom, I was able to shove something in here so they couldn't fall back down in that hole and it helped work both those uh, pieces out there. So we'll go ahead and get these plugs put in. So the chambers are all put together. Everything looks good there. Now we're gonna direct our attention to the pump itself. I've already cleaned this up. We're gonna go ahead and get the brass bushing in that goes right here. Make sure we get that in. It pushes in from the inside to the outside, just like that. So the next thing we're gonna do is get this offset piece, that's the cam in the middle. And then we're gonna get our two new uh, piston sections. The brass pieces will slide inside the pistons. And then you'll put one with the brass part that sticks out up and put that piece on. And then you'll put the other one facing the opposite direction and put that on top. So when you're done, you'll have your two piston sections put together like that. Then you'll notice one end of this has a recessed groove 
and that's the end that's going to go towards the side of the left of the camera that matches that brass piece that we put in before. So you put these in at an angle down and then kind of turn them sideways and slide them into place. So once those are in, you're left with something just like that. Next thing you're going to do is get your gaskets that go on the sides right here. And you want to make sure you notice where the hole is here and here on the one end of the pump and make sure that you match your gasket up in that same manner. So just like this, you've got that dowel at the bottom and then you've got your holes all lined up. Then you're going to pick the valve section that matches that and then has the top with the bolt and then put it up to that same side and put in the four bolts. Make sure everything lines up and then you're going to want to work the pistons into those holes when you do it. And all of these items, when I've been putting them together, I've been putting a little bit of lubricant on all the moving parts. So when it first fires up, we'll make sure everything's lubricated before the oil really gets settled in. So there's the pump all put together. I made sure everything was lubricated and I was able to turn it by hand. It's very tight, but it does move by hand. And then we're going to go ahead and on the side here, we're going to install the pressure relief valve, which goes in this top hole up here. Thread that in. And then in the bottom hole, we're going to install the valve, the control valve right here. And I opted to use the original control valve because the control valve that came in the kit that I had was so tight in the hole that it wouldn't even move. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse this original, which I'm not sure if this is actually the original or not, because I've read online and noticed some of them have a slit in it in the front like this. So I don't know which is the original with a slit or no slit, but the one that I had, this one, fits and was working well, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back. I don't think the issue with the pump was this piece because it still fits and works correctly. So there it is all assembled. Now we're going to go ahead and put the gasket on it, and we're going to put a little bit of uh, gasket sealant right around this pressure port right here on the top and bottom of the gasket. You don't want to put a lot, but just enough to keep it sealed up so you do not get uh, a minor leak around that pressure port. Now what we're going to do is climb under the tractor and attempt to hold that up with one arm and slide it up into place. Uh, I'm not going to be able to videotape that, but we'll come back once it's up. So the pump is back installed inside. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the drain plug and get the new gasket put on it and then screw the drain plug in. So everything's closed up on the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and put the PTO shaft back in through the back. So the PTO shaft is back in place and now you can actually turn that PTO shaft since everything's in neutral and actually see the pump move back and forth to make sure everything's working correctly. I went ahead and put the gasket on top. I put some gasket sealant right around the port where the oil transfers up to the top and then there's no reason to put any gasket sealant on the rest of it because it's really not going to have any oil up there. Then we'll go ahead and set the top cover on and try to get the bolts in. So now that the top cover is on, it's not tightened down, but all the bolts are in the holes. Uh, make sure you get all the bolts back in the same holes they came out of. All right, so now the top cover is on. We've got that valve you can see moving at the bottom there. We reached in and clipped it into the forks. So it now moves back and forth like it's supposed to. Now we're going to go ahead and put the rest of the oil in and tighten down the top cover. All right, so we are all back together now with the exception of the side cover on the other side and the seat and fenders. So we got everything hooked back up. I just got to tighten up the uh, lift arms in the back there and the top of the three point but uh, we had a little issue getting the pump to prime the first time. Uh, there's some air pockets inside of the valves, and so you had to go around to the other side, take off the caps on the valves, and uh, run it for just a minute, or turn it with the uh, PTO shaft for just a minute uh, to get the bubbles out of the valves. Once those were filled with oil, it started right up and everything worked perfect. Ran it up and down a couple times to get the bubbles out, and now it's working great. So we'll start it up here and take a look. So that 
that's just an idle. So it picked right up and you can see they're drifting back down now with it lowered. If it had an implement on there, it would go down quickly. So everything looks like it's working great. You can see over here on the other side, the oil level is just below that bottom bolt. I'm gonna let it sit for a few days and use it a little bit and then see where the oil settles into. It may need just a little bit more oil added to it, but I have a coffee can full of oil down here that I dribbled out while I was messing with it um, that I can dump back in there easy enough. So everything's looking pretty good. We'll get it put back together. So this weekend we'll have this tractor out and actually be using it for some work around the house here and hope everybody was able to use this video and get some help from it. And remember you can't finish a project without getting started.